Today with Joseph Prince. Every time you tr- you put your hand onto a task that God tells you to, whether it's a ministry, whether it's a mission trip, whether it's like a full-time ministry, whatever it is, God tells you to do it and you put your hand forth to it, the moment you touch it by faith, God takes care of the rest. Go after Jesus, people. When you see the ark, put your eyes on Jesus for you to see where He's going. You need to put your eyes on Him, looking off unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. Hebrews 1.3, as you bring the ark out, please, who being the brightness, Jesus, His God's Son, who being the brightness of His glory. Everyone say brightness of His glory. So He is the brightness of His glory. Go outside, the express image of His person. Go within. Don't forget the wood in between. Amen. He was cut off in the prime of His days. Amen. Wood, completely man, completely God. The God-man, Jesus Christ. And upholding all things by the word of His power. Do you all see this crown? It's literally called crowns all across. Amen. He who was once crowned with the crown of thorns is now in heaven crowned with glory. And He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Amen. So that crown there is this one here. Upholding all things by the word of His power. That's kingly power. Upholding all things by the word of His power is this crown. Then when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Blood is put on the mercy seat once a year. Amen. And that is when he had by himself purged our sins. So the mercy seat is him purging our sins, washing us from our sins in his blood. The blood speaking blessings upon the people. Amen. Amen. And now, people, the blood of Jesus is permanently in heaven. So when God looks at you, God does not look at you with judgment. God looks at you with mercy and love. Amen. 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 So let's look at the the poles here. What are the poles for? When the priests carry the ark, number one, they cannot carry the ark. No matter how many priests carry it, it's too heavy. Plus the solid gold, by the way, The lid itself is solid gold. This entire thing is beat out. The work of Jesus, He was beaten to become our mercy seat. Amen? One slab of gold. The lid is one slab of gold. And here, gold and wood. And it's too much for priests to carry. But the amazing thing is this. There was death when they tried to do it the worldly way on a bullock cart. Right? When David learned the way of God, God says it must be carried on the shoulders of the priest like this. Just to tell you that uh, it's very heavy, okay? So what you're seeing down here couldn't have happened without God helping. Watch this now. The Bible says when David saw the, the pattern of how the ark is to be carried, it's to be carried by the poles on the shoulders of the priests, but it's very heavy. So how can, how can they carry it? But the Bible says something. God help the priests. In other words, watch this. Your part is by faith. When God tells you to serve Him, whether it's children's ministry, whether it's ushering, whether it's coming to church, whether it's doing something for someone, if God tells you, all right, God will never give you something that's heavy. Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Because it's from Jesus, whatever the burden is, is always easy. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. Easy, light. Got it? If the Lord tells you to do something, If He tells you to, it's always easy. And the burden is light. So when God tells you to do something, your part is step up by faith. When the priest step out and touch the post and carry it, instead of it becoming heavy, it's sort of the thing carried the priest. How many understand that? The the, uh, the post carried the priest. It's like the priest is walking on air. It's like spring on on their steps. The Bible says, God help the priest. This, what, what, and every time you, tr- you put your hand onto a task that God tells you to, whether it's a ministry, whether it's a mission trip, whether it's like a, a full-time ministry, whatever it is, God tells you to do it and you put your hand forth to it, the moment you touch it by faith, God takes care of the rest. Well, the time came when Israel was about to cross the river Jordan. Okay? And this is what happened. Look at this. Joshua 3. And they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark, so obviously the ark is traveling, the priests are carrying the ark and... Uh, they say, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priest, the Levites bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. Go after Jesus, people. When you see the ark, put
put your eyes on Jesus for you to see where He's going. You need to put your eyes on Him, looking off unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. Amen. Look away from men, even good men. Look away from Pastor Prince. Look away from everyone but Jesus. Look unto Him. Go after Him. Yet there shall be a space between you and the ark about 2,000 cubits by measure. I'm going to tell you right now, right now I'm going to tell you this. This time when, when Joshua was carrying the ark, uh, the priests were carrying the ark during Joshua's time, this is the first time Israel was about to step into the promised land after long 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Okay? And the first one in is the ark. Okay, he went into the river Jordan. When you go into the river Jordan, it means a place of death. You understand? Amen. Israel went into Jordan and then before they went in, the priest would carry it. And the Bible says, and as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan and the feet of the priest who bore the ark deep in the edge of the water, the moment the, the feet of the priest touched the water, the Jordan overflows all its banks. It's, it's overflowing during this time of harvest. All right? It's like a flood overflowing. Amen? But the moment the priests carrying the ark, they were the first in. They touched the water. See what happened? Verse 16. The waters which came down from upstream, because it's the lowest place, right? Stood still and rose in a heap far, very far away at Adam, 30 miles away, the city that is beside Zaretan. What is the meaning? Are you battling a sickness or health condition? Jesus is not only able, but also willing to heal you today. Get this Jesus is able and willing magnet as a reminder of God's promise of healing and wholeness for you and be assured of his heart for you each day. Offer available to US and Canada residents only. The ark, a picture of Jesus, is the first one to go into the rivers of death. In fact, yar den, yar means going down, den means judgment. He went down into judgment for all of us. Okay? And God slapped the river Jordan all the way, 30 miles, and the water stood in a heap. But why did God slap back the judgment all the way to the city of Adam? God is saying, everything that came from Adam, the death, the destruction, the judgment, God slapped back at the cross when Jesus went in. All right, to judgment, in judgment for us, God slapped back judgment all the way to Adam. Yeah, hallelujah. I love my job. Love preaching the good news. Amen. You all get it? Amen. So the ark, by the way, the priest was standing there in the center of the river until all the people passed. That tells us that Jesus is the first in your situation and he's the last one out. Just now you saw the cross, right? The way the, the encampment. Where is the ark? In the center. Show them the encampment again. Where is the ark? In the center, where the cloud is. In the Holy of Holies. That's where the tabernacle was. So, the Lord wants to be in the center. He says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am where? In the midst. Put Jesus in the center of your studies. Put Jesus in the center of your career. Put Jesus in the center. And everything will be held together. Amen? When they travel, you know, they travel together all in one line, right? In the desert. You know where's the ark? In the center. But whenever there's trouble, whenever there's something, all right, the ark will go in front. The ark will be the first one in. But like the Bible says, the ark will go travel three days journey long before the people came to seek a resting place for them. So on your part, you put him in the center. On his part, he will go ahead of you and prepare the way. Give them Isaiah. Isaiah says this, God's nature. You shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. So God can be in any place, right? So He'll be in front of you to clear the way. And don't worry, the enemies come from behind you. He'll be your rear guard. Can I have a good amen? He'll go before you. Let me illustrate when the children of Israel, many of you watched the movie, Ten Commandments, right? They all came to the Red Sea. And then, lo and behold, behind them, they saw like clouds of dust as the chariots of Egypt was racing towards them. And now they are caught 
in between a rock and a hard place and they cried out to Moses, do you bring us out here to die? Moses, it's your fault. Now they'll kill us. In front of us there's a sea. And before God opened the sea, what happened? Read Exodus 14. And the angel of God, capital A, whenever it says the angel of God, it's referring to Jesus. Now he's not an angel. Jesus is God. But the word angel is generic term for representative of God. This is his pre-incarnate form. The angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. Initially, it was leading them in front. And now the enemy is coming from behind. Watch this. He went behind. To protect them from behind. So God, God is the first one leading them and He's the last one protecting them. Can you see that? I want you to feel in a world that is unsafe, that when you travel or when you, don't just think of traveling, anywhere when you get up in the morning, know the Lord has gone ahead of you. Amen. He's checked out the place. And he says, son, come on. Jesus saying to his sheep, he's the good shepherd, right? And what does he say to the sheep? When he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him for they know his voice. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, you got to learn to hear his voice. It's a given. It's a statement of fact. The sheep follow him for they know his voice. You don't have to teach sheep. You have to teach goats. But if you're born again, you're a sheep. But, 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 you're a sheep. You don't but. Listen, you believe. <laughs> Amen? It's a statement of fact. The sheep hear his voice and they follow him. Now, I'm not against people teaching how to hear God's voice and all that, but sometimes we complicate things. Have you seen a little baby? All right, you put a baby that's awake in a room, all right, and the mother just stepped in, and the room is very noisy with other ladies talking and chatting. The moment the mother comes in and the mother is talking to someone, the baby is alert. The baby does not need to be taught seven steps to hearing God's voice, your mommy's voice. Seven steps to hearing your mommy's voice. No. So what we need to do is to build confidence in God's people that they hear God's voice. They hear the shepherd's voice. Your confession ought to be, I hear his voice. You should be thanking God every day. I'm hearing his voice. And God will lead you in the, in the smallest details of life. You see, it says here, they follow him for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means, the no means there is very strong. It's ume in the Greek, which is a double negative. They'll by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. So as a, as, a, as a young Christian, you don't have to worry. Sometimes your head can be playing with you, but your insight tells you this is wrong, this is right. You don't live by the knowledge of good and evil. You live by the presence of life or the absence of it. If there's an absence of it, don't do it. If there's life, do it. Are you listening? And don't worry, what, what, if, what if I hear the wrong voice? They will not, strong negative, Umay. no means follow a stranger. You will not hear the devil's voice. I mean, you will hear his voice, but you know it's him. It's a strange job. It's a strange voice. You don't feel right. How I many you hear preaching? Many of you who are here, you, you've decided this is your, your home church. How do you decide this is your home church? Because you came here, Pastor Prince did not preach something that your head is trying to comprehend. I understand we are still struggling. In fact, many people are still struggling to understand what I'm preaching. But the thing is this, but your spirit is saying, Amen, I got it, I got it. In fact, this is what I believe. Somebody is saying outside what God has said inside. But I do not know how to put words. But He put words. So I'll be scared, I'll be afraid if I teach things that your spirit, now your head might not say, that's there's a, there's a, the first time I hear that. Your head might say that. But in your spirit, are you saying, mm, this is Jesus. Jesus is in you. The ark of the covenant, when you follow the ark, all right, you will not lack. You need to lose weight, you will lose weight. Amen? You need to be healthy, you'll be healthy. Follow Him. And what is good for one man doesn't mean it's good for you. What is not good for him doesn't mean it's not good for you either. Some people, some men of God I know, don't drink coffee. For me, I, like, I love coffee. Amen? Amen? So, doesn't mean it's a law. Okay? Follow Jesus. Have you learned something today? Praise the Lord. Give Him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What a word we've received today. Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel for daily updates. And don't forget to share it with someone you know. 
You never know who might need to be encouraged today. 